I'm very particular about my brush settings, but what I want is pretty straightforward. For my line work, I don't like brushes that change dramatically in terms of thickness or thinness or opacity or brushes that have like built-in tapers. I wanna be able to control all of that myself. Really, I just wanna get as close as I can to like a sign pen or like a brand new Sharpie. I'm also not someone that likes to nerd out about brush settings. I think the first time I even attempted to do this was back when I was using Procreate regularly and I couldn't find a brush that really worked for me. So I was trying to go into the settings and customize them to my preferences and then immediately got overwhelmed and confused and just had to bail on that. Yeah, you did. Anyway, I ended up finding some aftermarket brushes that I liked and I never looked back. It actually wasn't until years later that I attempted to mess with brush settings again, but this time it was with the vector brushes and Adobe Fresco. And at some point I decided to be brave. So brave. And dig into some of the other settings. And this led to me actually releasing a whole set of, actually two sets of vector presets. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made my gritty lining brush that is meant to emulate a, a sign pen or like a fresh Sharpie. Wait, what? It's just, why are you doing this? A simple this? line work brush that has a little bit of, a little bit of ink bleed look. Now to they're it. gonna know how to do it and then no one's gonna buy I was pretty happy with the basic round brush as is, but there was a couple things that I didn't really like. One was that the thickness would change based on how fast I drew the line. And the other was just how dramatic you are. the difference was from thick to thin. So I thought maybe I'd go in and see if I could tweak that a little bit. <laughs> You're a tweak. Turns out you can just uncheck velocity dynamics and get rid of that issue right away. Feeling pretty good about that victory, I decided to go into the pressure dynamics and adjust that a little bit. I pulled it down a touch and realized that this would help me quite a bit in getting more subtle transitions between my thicks and my thins. This is something I use a lot when I want to just add a little bit of a little bit of taper at the end, a little sophistication. You can't just you give will. away all the secrets. But sometimes I don't want them to taper. For example, if I'm connecting a line, I don't want it to taper. I want to be in control of when my line is gonna taper and when it's not gonna taper. And with these two adjustments, I was satisfied and worked with this for a while. When you feel like you've dialed a brush into your preferences, I recommend saving that brush into your library as a new brush. So to do this, you just come over here next to the name of the brush in the settings where it says round because we are working with the basic round brush and you tap on the ellipsis and then go save as new brush then you can name it whatever you want also if you got a little too wild with your settings and you just want to go back to the original brush settings you just click on this little arrow thing at the bottom and that will revert to the original settings this is another reason why i recommend saving the brush to your library after you've customized it because if we had done this when it was still the basic round brush, it would have just gone back to the original basic round settings and it would have gotten rid of any customization that you had done. The next set of options is for tapering your lines. As I mentioned, I like to do this myself. We know. So I keep this turned off. That said, for some specific applications like lettering, this can be helpful in a fun way to add some flair to your line. These are just your preferences though. Some people might like some taper. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. The, these are the settings that I like for a line work brush. Can't just assume someone doesn't my, like taper. My preferences. You're right. No, you're right. When you're right, taper you're right. nice. So for the taper settings, you'll see that there are two options. There's the mode length and the mode velocity. For length, it's just sort of controlling the length of how long the taper will go. And you can control the beginning and the end. So if you had these both at zero, it would be round at both ends. But if you wanted a taper, at the beginning, you could pull this up as high as you want. You could have a really long taper or a really quick taper. And you can also try it up here if you don't want to close this menu out. If you want one at the end, like that, it'll do it at both ends. You could have different lengths. You could have a start out with a small taper and go to a big one. I don't know what application this would be, but you know, these are your decisions. This is what you want to do. And let's check out the velocity taper. So the velocity taper controls the amount of taper by how fast you draw. This is not something that is relevant to me and it's not something I like, but maybe you do. Let me show you how it would work. So let's put the uh, taper here at the beginning. We draw this line slow. There's almost no taper. We draw it fast. We got a lot of taper. I don't know. I don't know why this is helpful. Maybe if you were like trying to do some quick hairs and then you wanted to draw like line work that was thicker. Uh, maybe? I don't know. If you like this, you know why you like it. Those are the settings for taper. You could just be like me and put them both at zero and control it yourself, but you do you. 
The next category is where we can add a little bit of grit, a little bit of character to emulate a little bit of ink bleed into our line work. To be fully transparent, there's not a ton of customization that you can do here, but I've been pretty happy with the results. And as an example, you can see here, I did this first skull drawing just using my crispy liner brush. And then over here, I used the gritty line work brush VV Sharpie. I feel like it looks, uh, I'm gonna die. Pretty analog, it's got a little bit of grit to it, but it's also vector. So in order to get this effect, we need to go into the shape and outline settings. So we'll open this up and here we'll see jitter. And jitter just sort of affects the line and has it kind of change and undulate a little bit. Gives a little bit of jitter. If we change the size, you can see at zero, there's nothing. And then as we bring it up high, you can see it gets quite a lot of stuff. Then below that, we have the distance, and this is the distance between the irregularities or the wiggles, if you will. If we bring this distance down, you'll see there's more of that. And you just want to sort of find a medium amount where it looks pretty authentic, but doesn't look too repetitive or fake. So you just want it to look like a little bit of ink bleed. You can see it, it's pretty good, but there's some different things that we can do to adjust it a little bit more. So one thing you can do is move the, the angle a little bit. So if you bring the roundness down a little bit and then rotate this, it'll sort of offset that a little bit so it's not perfectly straight up and down. But when you're using it as a line work, it's subtle enough that it looks pretty, pretty good. Now I find if you pair this with a subtle amount of pressure dynamics, a little bit of angle, a lot of roundness, but not fully, and then just an angle to sort of offset it a little bit. For the distance, I find that between one and five can work pretty well for this. Five gets a little more subtle, but there is still that little bit of like wobble to the line, which is nice. Whereas if you have it closer to one, it looks just like a little bit more gritty. And then another thing you can play around with is tilt and rotation. And this will allow the line to get a bit thicker depending on like how you're holding the, like you could use the side of your Apple Pencil a little bit. So it like changes. So like if I was like vertical straight up like this, it's a thinner line, but I could like use the edge to get that thicker line. I find that using this setting can give a little bit more of an authentic look because as you subtly angle the pencil as you're drawing, it's gonna vary that texture and make it not look so repetitive. So I think um, it, it's, it's a cool one to use. And then the stylus pressure is more of like a, a general thing and it's sort of something that you would need to see what works best for you. Also, if you're using like a really heavy uh, screen protector or something like that, or I know some people use two different ones, which is kind of wild. You could adjust this so that less pressure is needed to achieve the, the results. So you can, you know, move this to light and you've got this little test area here where it's like, you don't have to put that much pressure at all to have the line get thicker. Or if it was like heavy, if you are like heavy handed, you have to press pretty hard to get that difference, but it allows you to get really kind of fine lines. I tend to, you know, like it in the middle, a little bit close to the heavy side. That's good for me, but do what works best for you. And I'll just quickly mention the outline mode. Outline uh, allows you to do outlines and you can control jitter and all that stuff the same way here. Play around with it or you could just get my presets. I think they're pretty good, but you could probably do them yourself too. In Fresco, the line smoothing is separate from the actual brush settings. And this is something that I really like. When you're using Procreate, for example, the streamline effect, which is the smoothing in Fresco, is part of the brush setting. So you can't quickly go back and forth unless you have two different brushes. Why are you always bashing Procreate? Here, I can turn the smoothing all the way down if I want to do some like quick energetic angular lines 
or if I want to do some smooth, longer, flowy curves, I'll just turn the smoothing all the way up or put it in the middle for something in between. But actually, before you start digging into the vector brush settings and all of stuff, you should really watch this video, which talks about vector artwork in general and in Adobe Fresco and why it's important and useful. There's a lot of really great tips on using these brushes in there. I think you should just check it out right now. I hate you. All right, good talk. Apologize for my nasally post-flu voice. Who's even in charge here? And I think you need to pipe down a little bit.